6, 2018, it's a meeting of Northampton City Council. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the council president. I'll be presiding. Let me note the audio and video recording of these proceedings. And um, let me also announce we have um, something new for the city council. We have four assisted listening devices for those who, with um, uh, hearing challenges. And if you need one, uh, they can be requested of NCTV in the room um, in the door beyond the door just behind you, um, which is an exciting development. So we thank NCTV and others who help make that happen. We'll begin uh, with a period of public comment tonight. It's an opportunity for the public to speak on any issue you wish. We ask you only to keep it to three minutes or less. And please remember it's your time to give your opinion to us. We don't engage in a back and forth. And the reason for both those things is to make sure everyone is heard fairly and receives equal time. I'll start with my list, which only has one person, and then we can open it up to others afterwards. So I'll ask Hannah Coyle to come up if you, if you would. And Ms. Coyle, if you would give your name and address for the record, please. Would you prefer to sit for this, or? Oh, no. Are you sure? All right. <clears throat> Hannah Coyle, 187-187 Main Street. I'm here tonight to talk about ending economic pressure, ending economic, the in, ending economic oppression of women and homelessness. So, uh, let's end economic oppression of women <coughs> in this city. While, while higher wages and the living wage are becoming more prevalent in our city and communities, Economic oppression of women who have not been hired with um, have not been hired with equal pay to the wages that men um, that um, have not been hired and do not have pay that is commensurate with um, men who earn wages um, every week, month, and annually. White women are a vi are viable catalysts of change in our homes, um, employment offices, and communities. Please hire women, white women, and <clears throat> all women, all people, all citizens in the community uh, that would like to be hired. Um, <clears throat> this gives each citizen, uh, women, and um, employees um, economic strength and um, e um, economic security for their wives, husbands, families, um, and um, into their retirement years. Child care, education, health care, and transportation costs money. A higher pay rate commensurate with our male co-workers will help end poverty and homelessness. Please hire women in need of employment. Equal pay for women and economic Equal pay for women ends economic oppression, poverty, and gender bias, which has historically contributed to, to domestic discord and the oppression of women. I would also like to ask all businesses, all business owners um, of this city to consider uh, contributing one to five percent of all of economic of their economic earnings each month to help fund to help fund uh, building new apartments and residential communities. Um, this will be a viable economic <clears throat> strength of each business as we um, contribute to enacting and establishing lasting homes for each citizen in our communities who wish to do so, who wishes to do, um, to reside within. I also ask you to consider um, allotting a portion of that funding to people who um, live in rural areas, um, choose to live um, in the forest communities and what we 
have thus far called uh, the tent communities, and also people who have been living in their cars um, who may prefer to reside in an apartment or a residential community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Coyle. Thank you for those comments. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to provide public comment tonight before we start? Hearing none, we'll convene and I'll ask the role of the council to be called, please. Here. Present. Here. 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 So we have unanimous attendance. Um, first, a quick announcement regarding executive session minutes. The open meeting law requires public bodies to regularly uh, review minutes of executive session, determine if they may be disclosed. Uh, the executive session minutes of November 16th, 2017 have been reviewed. It has been determined that because of pending legal action, disclosure would defeat the lawful purpose of the executive session, so continued non-disclosure is warranted. Um, do other councillors have one-minute announcements? Councillor Barge. Yes. Um, I want to congratulate Linda Sabadosa. I want to congratulate Cho um, for winning their election. I also want to congratulate all the candidates who went out there and worked tirelessly of running for their positions. And, and the whole debates and everything was in due respect. So I, I, I just want to thank everybody. Secondly, I have another announcement. More and bigger illegal dumping on Sylvester Road. This has really become very, very serious. Um, I have a resident who does running and biking, and last week they had found and collected in our watershed area a toilet bowl, a tank, and two tires that had been dumped on Sylvester Road near Chesterfield Road where everybody runs and so forth. The next day they encountered a huge amount of household debris right in the same place. A filthy sofa with springs and all its dirty cushions, a cooler, big garbage bags that looked like they were full of some kind of stuffing material. A child's chair for eating at a table, some kind of plastic bins. It just has gotten out of hand. I'm working with the mayor's office plus the Department of Public Works and whoever is doing this, you need to stop but we are looking at putting up signage and also having the area being looked at. Thank you very much. Are there other councilors? Councilor Sherry. Um, I'd also like to take a moment and acknowledge the election that we had on Tuesday. Uh, I know we all look forward to being represented again uh, in January and working with our new legislators and we, uh, we congratulate them. And I wanna give a huge thank you to our city clerk and her office and, um, and all the election workers who had a really big, hot job um, with the very unusual nature of the election. Um, and all of us here know to some extent what it means to put ourselves out there as a candidate. And I just want to express appreciation and admiration for all who stepped up to run and, and worked so hard during a, a hot summer. Um, but I especially want to acknowledge our council president um, on a very fine campaign that was truly issues driven and uh, really elevated the conversation about policy that directly affects and is focused on our district. Um, I, I thank him for his leadership in that conversation, and, and I'm grateful for his leadership here on the council, so very well done. Thank you for those kind words. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, council for War II. Uh, yes. Uh, I'd like to announce this Saturday, September 8th, from 4 to 8, the Northampton Community Rowing Organization is celebrating 20 years of rowing on the Connecticut River. <clears throat> and this will be held at the Lions Pavilion in Hatfield from 4 to 8 um, this coming Saturday. A reunion of sorts for all the different families and rowers that have been involved uh, through the years in, in Northampton High Rowing and the Masters Rowing Program. Thank you. Any other counselors? No? Okay. Um, Great. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you have a proclamation this evening. I understand. Thank you very much. Good evening, counselors. Um, I have a proclamation that I'd like to deliver tonight. Um, it's actually requested by your colleague. Um, from Ward 7, and I have a, a constituent of hers that I'll be presenting it to. Um, it's entitled, 
Usher Syndrome Awareness Day, September 15, 2018. Whereas Usher syndrome is a relatively rare genetic disorder caused by a mutation in any one of 10 genes resulting in a combination of hearing loss and visual impairment, and is a leading cause of combined deafness and blindness, and whereas more than 400,000 people are affected by this genetic disorder worldwide, with approximately 50,000 of those living in the United States, and whereas Usher syndrome, which is, incurably, which is incurable presently, impacts three major senses in the body. Vision. Vision loss is caused by a progressive vision disorder known as retinous pigmentosa, RP. RP causes the light-sensing cells in the retina to gradually deteriorate, initially resulting in night blindness, followed by a narrowing of the visual field, common, commonly known as tunnel vision. Hearing. Children with Usher syndrome are born with or developing hearing loss. It is estimated that upward of 10% of people with congenital, bilateral, sensorineural hearing loss have Usher syndrome. And balance. Balance is achieved and maintained through input from your eyes, the vestibular organs in the inner ear, and the sensory systems of the body, such as the skin, muscles, and joints. Those with Usher syndrome suffer from severe balance issues due to vestibular dysfunction. And whereas there are three clinical types, type 1, type 2, and type 3, which are distinguished by the severity and age when the signs and symptoms appear, there are at least 11 different genetic types of Usher syndrome, as determined by the genes that are involved. One cannot determine the genetic type by clinical testing, as DNA testing is the only reliable way of determining the true genetic type and whereas because of limited public awareness, those affected with Usher syndrome may suffer with depression, anxiety, isolation, and loss of independence. And whereas on this day, we join with the Usher syndrome community to spread public awareness about this condition. Now, therefore, I, David J. Narkowitz, Mayor of Northampton, do hereby proclaim September 15, 2018 as Usher Syndrome Awareness Day in the city of Northampton. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the city seal the sixth day of September in the year 2018. And I wanted to present this to uh, Star Adams and ask her to please say a few words about um, this. Thank you so much, Mary Narkowitz and um, Court Klein and my wonderful Ward 7 counselor, Elisa Klein, for expediting this and putting it together. Um, I moved here from sunny South Florida some 24 years ago. Um, when my son was five years old, we had discovered he was born deaf down in Florida, and I wanted him to learn to speak. So we came up here and enrolled him in Clark School for the Deaf, and we've, we've been here ever since. And, he was, um, he's, he's been a very independent young man. Um, the bottom fell out of my life when we found out at age 12 that he was losing his vision as well. And he already had lost his hearing. He had cochlear implants, but he was doing very well with those. So we he started all over again. Um, and he, he had enough vision that he could get his driver's license at age 16. He was a very proud driver for quite a few years. And then at age 24, he had lost uh, more than 20% of his uh, peripheral vision. It's, it's a type of vision loss where it closes in. It's a tunnel vision. So he's still like 20-20 in the center, but he's legally blind because he's lost his vision here and on the sides. And you know when you go to the RMV and you've got that little blinky light test that you have to look into, he can't pass that anymore. So he, um, he's lost his driver's license. And so we put him on the waiting list for McDonald House <coughs> over here on Old South Street. and. Um, three years uh, we waited and, and we were able to get him a nice little apartment and it's right on the bike path. It, the, the bus stops right at the front door. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful location with someone with his, you know, with his afflictions. Um, but um, he's become socially isolated um, except for an occasional visit from mom and dad. We drive him around a lot. There's an organization called DB Can, which is Deaf Blind Community Access Network out of Boston that provides um, local people that take a special training to deal with deaf blind people and they will provide rides. It's paid for through the state, but 
not enough. Um, gas costs have been rising, you know, along with insurance and so on. So we've lost a couple providers. So it's back to mom and dad and his older brother, you know, giving him rides mostly. Um, I just, I'm, I'm so thrilled to be living in such a caring community where you all are willing to, you know, to bring light to this affliction as Mir Narkowitz mentioned, 400,000 people around the world, and my son is one of the 50,000 in the US. It's, it's rare, um, but I'm hoping that with more attention placed on it, the third Saturday of each September, that maybe we can bring him some help and others like him. Um, so I just, I'll end briefly with this quote from the Usher's Syndrome Coalition website, which says, shine a light on us before the darkness takes our light. So thank you very much. Thank appreciate you. I appreciate you uh, sharing your story and the story of your son and spreading awareness on this important issue. Thank you. Um, anything else from the executive here? No? Okay. Um, well, we'll move to our consent agenda which contains the following items, which I'll read at the request of any one counselor. They will be removed for a separate vote. First, the approval of uh, minutes of August 16th, 2018. Next, an application for a secondhand dealer license uh, for Grapefruit at 5 Market Street. Next, an application for a secondhand dealer license at Retro Genie. Uh, is there a motion, well, any removals? Okay, but a motion to approve. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, any abstentions? So all those items are approved, and we will move now to the Finance Committee. Thank you. I'll call the meeting to order and ask for the roll to be called. Here. Present. Here. First item of business is approval of the minutes of the August 16th meeting. Do we have a motion? So moved. All right, any changes or alterations to the minutes? No, hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. All right, the first uh, actual item on the agenda is uh, 18155, an order to authorize intermunicipal agreements for the Greenfield Community College use of the city's fiber network. Order that whereas Mass General Law Section 40, section, subsection 4A allows for joint operation of public activities among governmental units, and whereas Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 4A requires that such intergovernmental agreements be approved in a city by the City Council and the Mayor, and whereas the City of Northampton provides services to and shares services with other municipalities and entities, and whereas Greenfield Community College nursing program leases office space at Smith Vocational and Agricultural School with a lease term extended through June 20. Uh, 2022 and as such is using the city's fiber network therefore pursuant to mass general law section 40 subsection 4a the city council hereby authorizes the city of northampton to enter into an agreement with the greenfield community college to permit greenfield community college to use one fiber strand of the city's fiber network which is supplied under separate agreement with the five college net LCC for an annual fee per the agreement for fiscal years 2019 to 2022. Do we have a motion in finance? Motion. Second. Second. And the mayor is here to answer any questions. Um, so essentially, as you all know, uh, the Greenfield Community College nursing program moved into the um, uh, former uh, rec Parks and Recreation Department building at Smith Folk. Um, and in, they, in their first year of operation, because it was sort of a rushed move, they did a sort of a Comcast service line. Um, and so now they want to actually um, procure their internet through the five college uh, network, which is their right as one of the, uh, as a college here in the, um, in the Valley. Um, and we have access to that through our fiber network. Um, but we have to have an, a municipal agreement between us allowing them to have the strand to have access to that. So um, it's sort of a, uh, and, and the, the terms of this agreement track the terms of the actual lease um, uh, between uh, Smith Vogue and GCC. Um, the actual costs are gonna be very minimal. Um, uh, our, our CIO, uh, Mr. Pagan, um, has estimated it's basically going to be about $780 a year, um, which is just to cover maintenance and some other switches and related items. Um, so it's fairly minimal. But obviously, we want to uh, we want to support this uh, great program of, of having GCC in Hampshire County, um, and particularly having <coughs> a nursing program at Smith Folk. So we're trying to facilitate this. 
Question? Oh, just a quick question. So is the agreement, it's intermunicipal, is it with the town of Greenfield or with? No, it's with GCC because there are, it's an intermunicipal, it's, it's an inter, it's an interagency agreement. Okay. Um, so anytime two governmental, the city at all. no, no, no. Anytime two governmental agencies, you may remember we did one recently with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, uh, that included UMass actually as part of the bike share program. So anytime any um, governmental agency, whether it's local, state, regional, you know, um, you are allowed to do these sorts of intermunicipal. Just falls onto the intermunicipal section of law. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Any other quick? Oh, counselor. Yes, Mayor. What is the annual fee? As I said, the um, fee that we will be charging um, them, and it's really just to cover some of our maintenance costs, is seven hundred and eighty dollars a year. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be what would. That's the proposed contract that we have with them. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from councilors? Mm -hmm. oh, hearing none. Then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the next is eighteen one. Five, six. In order to rescind borrowing authorizations for rail trail access in the Mineral Hills land acquisition, <clears throat> order that the City Council rescinds the following orders because such borrowing authority is no longer necessary. Order 17.333, a $600,000 borrowing authority authorized under the loan order approved on June 15, 2017 for rail trail access to Look Memorial Park. And, and from Leeds to Williamsburg to be rescinded as the city did not receive a grant from the Parklands Acquisition and Renovations uh, for Communities Grant and an order 17332 for $200,000 of borrowing authority authorized under the loan order approved on June 15, 2017, <coughs> the acquisition of eight acres north of Route 66 in Mineral Hills um, as the city did not receive a land self-help grant Act. Do we have a motion to approve and finance? Second. Second. And any questions from the mayor on this one? Um, um, tonight will be a good uh, tutorial for folks who wonder why we do these things because we're coming to you now to ask you to rescind some um, borrowing authority <coughs> grants. Um, and then actually, we're going to ask you to give us borrowing authority <laughs> um, because we're applying for one of these grant programs. So um, this has become a fairly routine. Um, thing we apply for either a park or a land grant um, and as part of the application we get the authorization from the city sometimes we get the grant sometimes we don't get the grant but as is always our pledge to you we're not actually going to borrow the money um, so that's why we want to rescind it because it counts against our our um, our debt for essentially um, when people look at what we have authorized for debt any questions for the mayor on this one oh counselor um, I know that the rail trail is being is actually being paved a portion of it into Williamsburg, and so I'm wondering where that money is coming from if it's not related to this particular grant. Um, I'm fairly certain it came from another grant source. I would have to research that and let you know exactly which one. I know we got a couple of different other grants. Um, we also worked with Williamsburg, um, so I can find out what that is. But it's clearly not these two. Yeah. But I'll, I can get you that answer. Okay. Thank you. And generally speaking, we have a pretty good record with getting some of these grants. So we, we do. We get more than we don't. I think we do. It's, it's true, do. especially for land acquisition and, um, and park projects. It's obviously dependent on the competition and what other projects are out there around the state. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we were, we. Uh, yeah. I hear no other questions. Then all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The next thing is 18.158. In order to apply for a bond um, or apply bond premium uh, to the installation of our Canem field clay structures, order that the city appropriates $5,013.40, representing the aggreg aggregate remaining net premium paid to the city upon the sale of bonds issued on May 1st, 2018, to be used towards the installation of a new play structure at our Canem field. Such funds to be used in conjunction with the insurance proceeds and a gift to the city previously appropriated for the new place structure in June of 2017, including any costs incidental and related thereto and reduced by any amount authorized to be borrowed, therefore, by like amount. And the mayor is authorized to take any other action necessary to carry out such capital project. Do we have a motion of finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. This is the one that was burnt. 
Yes, this is, um, some of you may remember that the um, play structure at Arcanum Field uh, uh, was a, a victim of arson and, and was burned. Um, and so uh, we have been going through a long process of going through the insurance um, settlement process um, and then going through the um, bidding and design um, and now we're getting to the construction phase of actually replacing it. Um, there was an insurance settlement um, of a little <coughs> under $30,000. Um, the Ray Ellerbrook Memorial Fund also contributed $10,000 um, toward the structure, toward a new structure. Um, and we went through the entire uh, bidding costs, um, have actually acquired the play structure. It's actually um, at the DPW, uh, but, and then we have to hire an actual construction firm um, to put it together. And, and um, it's vertical construction, so we had to actually go out to bid and do all kinds of stuff. Who knew putting a playground together uh, would require all that? But, um, but we've come up a little short in the final budget. Um, uh, again, it's, we're thinking it's approximately $5,000 short, um, which is why um, we have this bond proceeds, which coincidentally is $5,013.40 from our borrowing that occurred earlier this year. Um, and typically, uh, we generally apply these bond proceeds to a capital project. So it seemed like a perfect it's match. Um, so we're basically asking you to appropriate this bond proceed to this project so that we can finally get the playground constructed at Arcanum Field. We've already selected uh, you know, the, the construction firm and it's uh, ready to go and we just need to have the sufficient funding. Uh, Councilor Dwight. Were the, was anyone caught? For this? I thought not, some, not that I'm aware of. Okay, no. so there was no prosecution and no possible compensation. Uh, yeah, as a no, of uh, there was no. Uh, you know, there was an investigation. There were no witnesses, and um, and again, I, I don't. We assume it's arson. We right. don't. We don't know. Um, well, it didn't spontaneously combust. That would be sure. uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, no, I, I don't. I'm not aware of it. Of any other no thing, years, yeah. no lightning strikes, saucer landing, or yeah. Something, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, so. Yeah, it remains unsolved, oh. and um, but obviously our insurance company did uh, compensate us for it. But obviously the given the age and condition of it, the settlement was a little less than what it takes to buy and install a new system. So, yeah. Councilor Klein, um, this has been a frequent flyer uh, kind of. I get tons of emails from people because it's in Ward 7 and yes. lots and lots of families who live around there used to use the play structure regularly. So for the last two years I've gotten lots of emails, you know, when is it happening, why isn't it happening? So I'm really happy to see that this finally is um, moving through. And I'm just wondering if you can give us a little bit of a timeline so I can give people some definites about when they can actually start climbing on it again. Yeah, as I said, we've um, we've signed. We're, we're almost ready to sign the contract once we have um, the funding. I, interestingly, we've hired Mountain View uh, Landscaping and Construction, which built Pulaski Park. Um, they're the company that won the bid. Um, we do. I think DPW needs to do a little bit of site prep work, which we're going to do. Which actually, there's still some of the understructure of the old playground, which is underneath the. The bark mulch and everything, um, but our hope is to get it done this, you know, very quickly this fall. Um, uh, I can't. I can maybe give you a quicker timeline once we sign the contract, and then we have a meeting with the um, with the with the construction folks. But I mean, it literally, all the components um, are are nearby at the cemetery. Uh, you know, with our cemetery department at Spring Grove, um, they've all been delivered. It's all waiting. Uh, we just had to hire a, a firm to actually. Us assemble it so it should be a fairly straightforward process so hopefully um, by by when the leaves start turning and it's fall that kids will be back on that playground kids watching baseball games and and uh, soccer games and things like that so any other questions for the mayor on this one hearing none then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance please say aye, aye. 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 Any See, the last one is 18159. It's an order to authorize borrowing and grant applications for the Florence recreational fields. 
and this is 18159 order that whereas Florence recreational fields is a popular community-wide asset and the open space and recreation multi-use plan 2018 to 25 recommends improving parks and recreation areas and implementing the next phase of Florence recreation fields and whereas Florence recreation fields is dedicated uh, to park and recreation purposes under Mass General Law Section 45, uh, Subsection 3, and whereas this phase will complete the Florence Recreation Fields Project and enhance the facility with additional play structures, field improvements, plantings, and accessible benches and a play area, and whereas the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs is offering reimbursable grants to cities and towns to support the preservation and restoration of urban parks through the Parkland Acquisitions and Renovations for Communities Grant Program. Um, the park grant is a reimbursable program which requires the city to demonstrate that it has all the funds necessary to improve the park pro properties prior to state reimbursement and whereas the Florence Recreation Fields final phase will cost an estimated $625,000 therefore uh, may it be ordered that the city council appropriates and authorizes the city treasurer with the approval of the mayor to borrow six hundred twenty five thousand dollars over 15 years under mass general law section 44b subsection 11 and mass general law section 44 subsection 8c or any other enabling authority for the purpose of improving improvement of public parks and playgrounds on said property and the mayor be authorized to file on behalf of the city of northampton any and all applications deemed necessary for grants and or reimbursements from the commonwealth of massachusetts executive office of energy and environmental affairs and or any other others in any way connected with the scope of this article and to take other such actions as are necessary to carry out the terms purposes and conditions of this grant and the Northampton Parks and Recreation Department and or Parks and Recreation Commission be authorized to enter into all agreements and execute any and all instruments as may be necessary on behalf of the city of Northampton and that the mayor be and is hereby authorized to take such other actions as are necessary to carry out the terms purposes and conditions of this grant to be administered by the Parks and Recreation Department. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Second? Second. Any questions for the mayor on this one? This is, again, sort of the reverse of the procedure that you've done earlier. Um, uh, uh, the um, Parks and Rec Director likes to joke that it's phase 72 of this project, because it seems like there's been so many different <laughs> phases of it. Um, but um, but it's you know this has been one of our most successful and popular recreational areas in the city and if you go by there on any given day there's you know a half dozen or so uh, different games going on from different leagues there's people using the walking trails there's families playing at the playgrounds um, and over the course of the time that it's been open um, other outstanding needs and suggested um, improvements have been recommended so the goal of this um, final phase of the project is to try to is to try to uh, meet those um, included in this phase would be um, additional shade trees um, uh, the final playground pieces including a young child play structure um, it would add an accessible port in place <coughs> uh, rubber play area um, safety nettings for the baseball fields um, had a few broken windshields um, up there because you know some fly balls uh, flying around in the parking lots quite close um, the, it will also include um, fencing in the baseball dugout areas um, solar powered scoreboards accessible benches um, recycling containers um, and additional historical and other uh, signage so those are some of the things that will be part of the park grant application that we'll be uh, putting forward and this just again as it says in the um, in the order itself we have to demonstrate that that we're committed to the project and that we have the funds um, to be, then be reimbursed but obviously we will not uh, we will not seek the actual borrowing questions for the mayor on this one oh, everybody good with it's been a very successful project um, hearing none then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance please say aye aye, aye. any opposed uh, and I know of no other new business for us to discuss tonight, so a motion to adjourn would be in order. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Hey, we're back in City Council, so let's take on some of these financial orders. The first is 18.155 in order to authorize an agreement for Greenfield Community College to use the city's fiber network. First reading. First and second. Is there a discussion on this? I think this is a great common sense idea. So I'll ask for a roll call. Yes. 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 
Yes. Councilor LaBarge. I mean, yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah, the order is approved. Next, 18.156, an order to rescind borrowing authorizations for rail trail access in Mineral Hills land acquisition. Is there a motion Approval on this? Approval first Second. reading. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the rescinding of borrowing authority? Uh, if not, can we have a roll call? Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 That order is approved as well. Now we come to 18.158 in order to apply bond premium uh, to installation of Arcanum Field play structure. Second. Any discussion on this order? Okay, roll the council, please. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Goodwell. Yes. And Yes. Next, 18.159, in order to authorize borrowing and grant application for Florence Recreation Fields. Move approval. So second. second. Made and second. Any discussion? Okay. Uh, roll call. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Goodwill. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. There are three remaining matters on second reading. Uh, the first is 18.141, order to award a contract for fiscal year uh, 2019 audit to Scanlon and Associates. So motion to approve this. So moved. And second, any discussion on second reading? Okay, a roll call. Councilor LaBarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 It's approved on second reading. 18.150, an order authorizing the city of Northampton to acquire historic, uh, historic preservation restriction on the Hampshire County Courthouse. Second. Any discussion on second reading? Roll call, please. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. 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 And finally, to wrap up our contentious city council meeting tonight, is 18.145 in order to name the vehicle entrance way to Northampton City Hall, Mayor Sean Dunphy Way. Is there a motion to approve? Second. second. May and second. Any discussion? Roll <coughs> call. Yes. 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 Do we skip something? I don't rise to make it contentious. I just I wanted to at the last meeting about this order, um, Councilor Bidwell had asked me, will there be a ceremony of some kind about this order that you just adopted? Now that it is adopted, um, I will say that we are planning to do an actual unveiling of the sign um, on Saturday, uh, September 29th at 1030. And I'll put out more information about it. And um, uh, Mayor Dunphy's um, uh, wife, Anne, and, and daughters and five grandchildren are all scheduled to be here for the unveiling. So um, I just want to give counselors a heads up but that it's, no, it's not a top secret thing anymore. So, That's great. Yeah, so I'll put some further announcements once we get closer. Thanks. Look forward to that. Thank you very much. Um, no information requests today? No new business? There's a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Any opposed to adjournment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Seven.